Hey, welcome back everyone. In this chapter, we'll learn about the various hypothesis testing methods for two populations. But first, let's check out the learning outcomes for the chapter. For chapter 10, we'll be skipping the estimation process for two population means. However, in this video, we'll discuss the different hypothesis techniques used for the difference between two population means and specifically for independent samples. Then we'll focus on how to conduct hypothesis tests for the difference between two population means for paired samples. And then finally, we'll talk about how to conduct hypothesis tests for the difference between two population proportions. So if you're ready, let's get started. So if you recall in chapter four, we learned that independent events are when neither event influences the other. In this chapter, independent samples occur when we select samples from two populations in a way that the values in one sample have no influence on the values in the other sample. In business, there'll be times when you must test whether two populations have equal means or if one population mean is greater or smaller than the second population mean. We learn how to conduct hypothesis tests for one population in chapter nine, and the process is very similar for hypothesis testing for two populations. So here we have two different situations for hypothesis testing for two population means. We'll be focusing on independent samples for both situations. Here on the left is when we know the population standard deviation. Then on the right is when we don't know the population standard deviation. Note that this sigma here is the population standard deviation symbol so when you're trying to identify the right type of hypothesis test to perform, make sure to look out if sigma is given in the problem. Note that when we don't know the population standard deviation, also need to identify if the variances are equal as this determines which tool pack option you'll use in Excel. Let's review the different variations in your hypothesis test next. When we are hypothesis testing for two population means, there are two ways we can write the hypotheses, and you'll see both on the homework. So just like in chapter nine, we're working with two-tailed test, one-tailed lower tail test, and one-tailed upper tailed test. So let's look at the two-tailed test first. In this first version up here, the null hypothesis for the two-tailed test is written in a way that says the difference between the two population means is zero. In other words, it's saying that there's no difference between population mean one and population mean two. In the alternative hypothesis here, it states that there is a difference because when we subtract the two population means, it does not equal zero. It does not matter if the difference is negative or positive because it simply means there is a difference whether it's on the left or the right. We will reject the null if the population means are different from each other. If we look at our second version, the null hypothesis here states that the population mean one is equal to the population mean two. And the alternative hypothesis states that the two population means are not equal. Recall that whenever you see the equals or not equal sign, that's a two tailed test. For the lower tailed test, let's pay attention to the alternative hypothesis first. This is saying that the difference between the two population means is less than zero. So when we take the population mean one and subtract it by population mean two, it's less than zero, meaning it's negative. And we're on the left side or the lower side of our curve. We would reject the null. Looking at the second version of the same one tailed lower tail hypotheses, it says that the population mean one is less than or smaller than the population mean two. And if that's the case, the sample data will fall in the rejection region on the left of the curve. Recall this less than symbol points to the left. So I know it's a lower tailed test because we're looking for less than. That is why I'm focusing on the alternative hypothesis here. So it's easier to identify which tail the one tail test is for. For the upper tail test, it says that when we take population mean one and subtract it by population mean two, the difference is greater than zero. So the difference between the two population means will be positive number. So the population mean one is bigger than population mean two. So in the second version, when we look at the alternative hypothesis, it says that the population mean one is greater than population mean two. Let's work on a practice problem for when the population standard deviation is known. Here is question 10.21 from the textbook. Given the following null and alternative hypotheses, conduct a hypothesis test using an alpha of 0.05. The population standard deviations of population one and two are assumed to be known. The alternative hypothesis is that population mean one is greater than population mean two. 
So first, we must make sure we understand our hypothesis. Since it shows us the greater than symbol and it points to the right, we know that we're working with a one-tailed, upper-tailed test. Let's go ahead and bring in our visual here so we understand where the rejection region is for the test. The alpha was given at 0 0.05, so do we know the population standard deviation? Looking at the table of data here, we can see the sigma symbols here for population 1 and 2. Therefore, yes, we know the population standard deviation, so we're going to be using z-values for the hypothesis test. So here is the decision rule. We will reject the null if the calculated test statistic z is greater than the critical value. Recall, you'll look at the alternative hypothesis, and whatever that sign is, that's how you know that this is a greater than test. For the critical value, if you're using Excel, this will be like what we learned in chapter nine. We will input equals norm.s.inv, and then one minus alpha, since this is an upper tail test, and we get 1.645. So let's plug in the critical value into the decision rule. So if the calculated test statistic that we're going to find in part B is greater than the critical value, we reject the null. Here is the formula for the test statistics. When you look at it, you can see it looks familiar to the test statistic that we used in chapter nine for one population, but now we have twice the variables because we're working with two populations. We have two sample means, two population standard deviations, two sample sizes, and two hypothesized population means. Note right here where we see the hypothesized means being subtracted. That's the first version of the hypotheses that we discussed previously where we hypothesize that the difference is zero. So let's plug in the values for each variable. In the numerator, we'll plug in the sample mean for population one and the mean for population two. Now, we just mentioned that the difference in the hypothesized population means is zero, so that's why we use zero here. In the denominator, we'll plug in the population standard deviation for population one and two, as well as the sample sizes. Note, be very careful when you plug this information into your calculator that you work with the order of operations correctly. So 144 minus 129 is 15 in the numerator. Then we'll calculate 11 squared divided by 40 plus 16 squared divided by 50. Take the square root of that number and we get 2.854. When I divide these two numbers, we get a test statistic of 5.26. This is in our rejection region above the cutoff point. Therefore, we reject the null hypotheses and conclude that the mean for population one exceeds the mean for population two. In real world applications, just like we discussed in chapter nine, we often don't know the population standard deviations. Next, we'll learn how to perform hypothesis testing using Excel for this situation. One key consideration when working with hypothesis tests when the population standard deviations are not known is whether the populations have equal variance. This will be given in the problem but you'll need to watch out for this because it determines which option you choose in Excel. Here is question 10.19 with the following null and alternative hypotheses stated where it says that there is no difference in the population mean and the alternative says that there is a difference between the two population means. Recall that equals and not equals tells us that this is a two-tailed test. To test the null hypotheses, Random samples have been selected from two normally distributed populations with equal variances. The following sample data was observed. We will test the null hypothesis using an alpha of 0.05. Now again, do we know the population standard deviation? As you can see in the problem, there's no mention of the population standard deviation. We only have sample data, therefore we do not know sigma, and we know that we're going to be using t values. So if you're using appendix F to find the critical t value, you have to use the degrees of freedom for two populations. The degrees of freedom is sample size one plus sample size two minus two. Recall in chapter nine that the degrees of freedom for a single sample was n minus one. So in other words, if you think about the degrees of freedom for two populations, it's just doing the n minus one twice. So there are nine samples, so we take nine plus nine and subtract two, and we get a degrees of freedom of 16. In this video, we'll use the output from Excel to run the hypothesis test. Here are step-by-step -step instructions, and you'll wanna make sure you have the data analysis tool pack set up since you'll need it to run the two sample T test. A couple of key points here. You need to know if we're dealing with equal or unequal variances, since this determines which t-test you will select. The hypothesized mean difference will be assumed to be zero, but you can plug in zero. Always remember to check the labels box if you include the header row for your sample data, 
Otherwise, you'll get an error. Finally, type in your alpha given in the problem and click OK. Here is a screenshot of the t-test for two samples assuming equal variances. Recall the problem told us that the variances were equal, so this will always be given to you. I have entered the sample data for both populations here, but in the homework, you can click on the link to download the data to Excel so you don't need to worry about typing it in yourself. I have entered the range for variable one and variable two here, entered zero for the hypothesized mean difference, but don't worry if you forget since Excel will assume zero. I checked the labels box because you can see I've included row one in my variable ranges and that has the text population one and population two in it. Labels just means column names. Finally, I entered 0.05 since this is the alpha given in the problem and I clicked OK. And you'll get this output on a new sheet. It gives you the mean of both populations, the variance, the number of observations or the sample size, which is nine for both samples. It gives us the pooled variance, which only applies for populations with equal variances. Here is the hypothesized mean difference because we hypothesize that there's no difference between the two populations. The degrees of freedom is 16, which matches what we calculated previously. T-stat is a test statistic that we use to compare against the critical value. So rather than you doing hand calculations, you have to be able to read this table and look for the test statistic. It also gives us the p-values and t-critical values for one and two-tailed test. So whether you're asked to do the p-value approach or the critical value approach, you have all the information you need right here. For this problem, we'll use the critical value approach. We state the decision rule that we reject the null hypothesis if the calculated test statistic t is greater or less than the critical value. Otherwise, we do not reject. When working with the critical value of a two-tailed test, the critical values are plus or minus. So let's plug in the 2.1199 and negative 2.1199 that we got for the T critical value for the two-tailed test from the output in Excel. For part B, the calculated value of the test statistic was negative 4.7725. Let's bring in our visual to see our rejection regions for the null hypothesis. We have calculated the two critical value cutoff points of negative 2.1199 and 2.1199 on each side of the curve. And the test statistic of negative 4.7725 is in the bottom area of the curve here. Therefore, since T is negative 4.7725 and is less than the critical value of negative 2.1199, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the mean for population one is not equal to the mean of population two. Now, I use the critical value approach here, but if we're using the p-value approach, we would take the p-value from Excel output for the appropriate tailed test and compare it to the alpha or the significance level in the problem. If the p-value is less than the alpha, we reject the null. If the p-value in the table is greater or equal to the alpha, we do not reject the null. Well, everyone, that wraps up this first video on hypothesis tests for two population means using independent samples. In the next video, we will cover the hypothesis test for two population means using paired samples.